Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, Google Translate. Um, and I'm not sure, I guess most people here probably, who used Google Translate before? Who, or who did not use Google Translate? <laughs> 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 Uh, okay, so I guess I didn't don't don't need to explain too much about it. So basically, we provide this uh, right free translation service where you can translate, uh, type in some source uh, word, translate in a different language or a sentence uh, or a paragraph, or you can translate web pages. Or it's integrated into Gmail, and uh, you can do also cross-lingual search. So you type in a query in English, and you can search um, uh, uh, just other languages, and it also tell you which language that might be a good. Uh, language for that uh, specific query. So, uh, if you look back, how machine translation, uh, right? Machine translation was one of the very early uh, things that people looked at in artificial intelligence and has been pursued for many, many years. Um, and uh, uh, what we basically, the way we are addressing machine translation is uh, using very large amounts of data, very large computational resources and learning basically how to do that. So that's a different approach and has been pursued for a long time in the, in the field, but nowadays uh, most people in the research community are also pursuing this kind of data-driven approach. And so here it, it shows kind of a timeline of what happened um, uh, uh, in, in the last few years. So in the very beginning, we didn't have our own system. We just licensed a third-party system, which was full-based machine translation. And then in 2006, we, we, we had our first for for a small number of languages, so our very first language actually was Chinese, um, uh, and then we added Arabic and Russian. Uh, and over time, basically, then when, when it really turned out that this approach is really working well, we can build a better machine translation. Uh, we can system build systems which are much better than before. Uh, then we just applied this to all those languages. So in 2007, we kind of uh, did all the languages with our own in-house system. And then we just uh, uh, scaled the system up to many more languages and better quality. And so now we have actually, so the, the list is actually incomplete. Uh, so I think it shows some 50 languages or so. But now we have 63 <laughs> different languages. The last set of languages that we launched was uh, Bengali, Kannada, uh, Tamil. So, so, so languages where a few people probably know where they even come from. Um, and so the uh, very important thing for us for building the machine translation system is data. And there's just this universal rule, more data is better data. This is just a learning curve where we have our system for a bunch of different languages from Portuguese English to Chinese English, trained on a million words. So if you go to 10 million words, uh, quality gets better. And, and on this curve, it's kind of if you have 0.2 on this metric, uh, so on the middle <coughs> axis there's a blue score, then it's kind of a reasonable translation. It's not a good translation, but it kind of is okay uh, yeah, to expose users to that. So with one million words, it, it's very hard to build a decent system. You need a very simple language. Uh, but if you have then 10 million words, a bunch of languages are there, and then you just go to 100 million words or to a billion words, and you see a nice improvement, which is a little bit flattening uh, on that. Uh, but, but basically, right, if you have a billion words, then uh, uh, you get pretty good quality for, for all those languages. And this is just uh, data that we use in order to train the translation model. You can kind of do the same thing if you just add more data to the language model, which shows us how good is the target language, and then uh, get, get similar quality uh, improvements. So I, I, what I, I don't want to explain kind of how our system works and all that stuff. So what I want to do is kind of discuss some hot areas, interesting challenges where we are currently working on or, or, or which, which, which are hard for us to deal with. And so I go through those long distance phenomena, morphologically rich languages, uh, evaluation, feedback loops, and speech to speech translation, and, and those kinds of things. So, so uh, a big challenge for uh, uh, machine translation in general, I guess a lot of the, the models in natural language processing nowadays is we are pretty good in local dependencies. Engrams are great, right? And we have tons of them then anything that is local, you can do amazing things where, it's, where uh, it's very hard for a human to kind of compete because we can estimate those probabilities on just huge amounts of data. But things which are more longer distance, those are the tricky ones. Uh, and so we, that's a lot of the research that we put in uh, in order to figure out better ways to do, for example, reordering from uh, English to Japanese, that we can move the verb to the right place and, and figure out all the dependencies that tell us how to do that. 
Um, so uh, morphology is another one, just going into target languages, but but uh, uh, we're, we're something like Russian. So another big challenge is just um, uh, evaluation. So the, the thing, the way we build the machine translation system, which is very important, is this: that we're kind of agnostic about what works, right? So we have an idea, we try to implement that idea, um, uh, and and if it works, if if we get a better result than before then we use that and, and that goes in the system and if not we don't do it and then we just go through that loop uh, over that and by that we learn kind of what matters and what doesn't and and one big challenge is at this point <coughs> just this metric how do we know that our system is better and, and human evaluations are very expensive and there's a, the main problem also there's a, a, a high latency that you got those back and and you want to have kind of really meaningful metrics that tell you what, what gets better. And, and the metrics that has been used in machine translation for a long time, kind of because there was so much progress, is, is not really uh, working well anymore. So, so we, we are having uh, uh, a lot of work uh, on, in, in that space. Uh, so another one is, is this feedback loop. So what uh, Peter mentioned with the, with the control aspect of that. So for a lot of things at Google, you have these amazing kind of feedback loops. Where, where search can get better because people search, or speech recognition can get better because people use speech recognition and then click at the results and then you have more training data. For machine translation, this is much harder, right? Because typically people look at a machine translation and wouldn't tell us now this was a bad translation or you should do it differently. And, uh, but, but so we are experimenting with a bunch of different things. We have a, a framework for human translators, for example. Or here is, is something where, where if you, uh, go with your mouse to a translation and then you hover over all that, then you get a list of alternatives and then if you don't understand this word, right, you might just say, what, what is this? And then you see a list of alternatives and then you say, oh, if the third one then makes total sense and then you can correct the sentence by clicking on that. And this helps uh, the user and but then it's also uh, feedback for the system in order to produce next time probably a translation that's more similar to to that one. But this is an active kind of area where in machine translation it's not as clear as in some of the other areas to get this kind of feedback. Um, and certainly uh, very exciting is, is the speech to speech translation. So if you have an Android uh, phone uh, then uh, basically have this conversation mode in, in Google Translate where you can just uh, speak it in English and have a conversation with someone in Spanish back and forth. Uh, and and uh, this uses then the speech recognition technology where we need more uh, in a second. And, and this is just an area where all those different technologies which go into that, the machine translation, speech recognition, uh, speech synthesis, and a uh, big aspect also is the whole HCI interaction in order to make this really efficient uh, uh, for the user, <laughs> given the fact that once in a while the system will produce a wrong recognition or a wrong translation. Okay, so that was it for machine translation.